It's Tuesday, April 12, 2022. This is the regular scheduled meeting of the Iroquois County Board. I'd like to call the roll, please. Hulk. Here. Bard. Here. Barron. Here. Botcher. Here. Bowman. Bauer. Here. Kokenauer. Present. Crow. Present. Curtis. Here. Ducat. Hughes. Here. Johnson. Lynch. McGinnis. Yes. McTaggart. Awful. Here. Penny. Here. Sure. Here. Young. Zoom waltz. Present. Okay, Mrs. Awful. Yes, good morning. Uh, today we have Pastor Lori Jonathan from the First Christian Church. Here you watch Big Things as far as the church. Regarding the agenda. Seeing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, same sign. The motion passes. Everybody's been sent a copy of the minutes from the March 8th meeting. Do we have a motion to approve those minutes? This is all. Is there a second? Mr. Penny, are there any questions or comments regarding the minutes? None. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. The motion passes. This is the payroll. We have a motion to approve payroll. Mr. Zumwalt, second by Mr. Hughes. Are there any questions or comments regarding the payroll? Seeing none, the clerk will call the roll, please. Bard? Yes. Barron? Yes. Bocher? Yes. Bowers? Yes. Coconauer? Yes. Crow? Yes. Curtis? Yes. Hughes? Yes. McGinnis? Yes. Awful? Yes. Penny? Yes. Kerr? Yes. Young? Uh, sorry, Mr. Zumwalt? Yes. And all. Yes. Okay, next are public comments. We'll begin with Mr. Raymond. Good morning, everybody. Um, I have two really short things. Uh, yesterday I was in contact with one of our media, Mike Rubel. Uh, for those that don't know, uh, he suffered a mini stroke and he asked that while he couldn't be here today, he is definitely here in spirit with everybody. Uh, he's doing well, he's working part time and trying to ramp himself back up. So, uh, very happy for him. If anybody knows him, please send him an extra prayer. I'm sure he can use it. 
Uh, the next thing to mention is this week is Telecommunicators Week. Telecommunicators Week is an appreciation week for our current dispatchers or telecommunicators. Uh, it's the week of April the 10th, so if you know a dispatcher or a telecommunicator, give them a thank you. They work very, very hard and diligent for this county and for any other area that needs their help. After that, questions? Thank you so much. Any other public comments this morning? And then we'll go on to the outside organization reports, Mr. Crawford. Good morning, Chairman, members of the Iroquois County Board, and guests. I'm Angel Crawford, the Executive Director of the Iroquois County Economic Development Association. In the spring of 2021, Mayor John Allians and the city of Watsika were pioneers in being the first town in Iroquois County to take advantage of the Illinois Housing Development Authority Community Revitalization Program by completing a community needs survey. This program takes a deep dive into housing in the housing chapter of towns, in, excuse me, into the housing chapter of a town's comprehensive plan. It's completely anonymous and allows residents to take part in developing a strategy for future development, identifying housing needs and goals, and creating a long-term vision for their town. So why should towns in Iroquois County sign up for this program? First of all, this is a free community planning plan provided by IHDA. The planning takes less than a year for smaller towns. Volunteer and stakeholder participation to assist in this program is a must for this program. The more participation with the community, the faster the plan gets completed. These plans are for long-term strategy. They do not have to be adopted, but most communities do adopt the plan after completion. If this program is adopted or implemented, or is incentivized, it is incentivized by IHDA Low Income Housing Tax Credit, or LIHTC. Any developer that comes in to build, they give a 10-point incentive on their application for community housing. This plan would line up with developer with IHDA programs. I spoke with the IHDA program coordinator last week, and she let me know that currently there's a waiting list for this program, but now is a good time to sign up. So be sure to spread the word. Yesterday, I received information from Patrick Doggett with Congressman Kinsinger's office about an exciting grant opportunity for nonprofit organizations in Iroquois County and North Central Illinois through the Painters District Council number 30 based out of Aurora, Illinois. The Patch Foundation grant is awarded to organizations needing financial assistance to develop or enhance a community program for children. Any North Central Illinois nonprofit working to improve the lives of children is invited to apply for funding, and the award is $15,000. The Community Partnership Grant is awarded to organizations needing assistance to complete a renovation project that will be excuse me, that will make a difference within their community. Any North Central Illinois nonprofit in need of skilled volunteers and materials for a project involving painting, drywall finishing, or glazing is invited to apply. The 2022 grant cycle is now open. All grant applications must be submitted by 5 p.m. June 3rd, and award winners will be announced by August 1st. Applicants are encouraged to complete and submit an application online at PDC30 forward slash grant. Finally, one of the many goals of the Airport Economic Development Association is to bring organizations together to collaborate on how to make our county and towns better. Later this month, Ida is teaming up with the Kankakee Airport Ford Association of Realtors to host a mayor's only breakfast. This breakfast will give mayors and realtors from Iroquois, Ford, and Ford County, and Kankakee County a chance to network and get to know each other. 
During the breakfast, mayors will have the opportunity to share what is happening in their town, talk about future plans about their town, and explain what incentives their town offers for re relocating businesses and residents. We hope that this is the first of many mayor and realtor breakfast meetings and appreciate the opportunity to provide this great networking event. For more information about these or any of these programs, these any of these programs or topics, please feel free to call the Iroquois Economic Development Association office at 815-432-0072. Thank you for your time. Okay. So I am starting up on the summer work experience program. Um, what that does is it gets them hands-on um, experience in the job that they are going to pursue in the future. Um, so right now I've got current locations like Center Street Photography, Ian Company Design, IMH, potentially Quick Loop, potentially Chrysler, potentially Dodge Construction. Um, and then in July, with the youth, I'll also be starting a fiscal literacy course. Um, just so that once they graduate, they're not out there making a ton of money to go to go and make unnecessary debt. Um, in terms of the adult center program, we've had seven new adult enrollments. Um, and our goal between Ford and Iroquois County was about 25. So we're, for Iroquois County, we're three away from our target. Um, everybody that's in a new enrollment is doing CDL, CMA, phlebotomy. I've got one person doing career exploration because they're currently on the OA and they don't really know what they're going to do. Um, and that's kind of fun with them. Um, I have a board in my office of pretty much everybody that's currently hiring in Iroquois County. However, a lot of them are very dated, like some of them carry pictures of in the office. Um, and I know that that's not so accurate. So if you know anybody that's currently looking for an employee, if you know anybody that's going to be hiring soon, send them my way, get some of my information. I will be out in the community in the next two weeks putting up a couple flyers, which are actually on the back table if you guys want to take some. Um, so just kind of, if you guys wouldn't mind spreading the word a little bit. Um, and then in terms of outreach and community events, our WIOA bus is supposed to be ready by the end of July. <clears throat> so we'll be taking that out to the county fair. Um, we'll probably be doing a couple events at the public library. Questions, comments, concerns? Okay, thank you. Do we have any other outside organization reports this morning? We now will hold on to the committee. Report. Members of the county board, your committee. Only preferred policy and procedure would beg leave to submit the following report on the matters before them. The committee met at the Administrative Center on March 31, 2022, at 9 a.m. Members present were Sure, Barron, Ball, Bard, and Barb Uffel. Michael McTaggart was absent. Also present Finance Manager Jill Johnson, County Clerk Rian Schuber, Sheriff Ken Perzi, County Engineer Joel Moore. EPS Director Eric Raymond and EMA Director Eric Stacey. The meeting was called to order. It was moved by Alpha and seconded by Barr to approve the agenda. The motion carried by a roll call vote. There were no public comments. The committee chairs gave their monthly reports. Management Chairman Barron reported the management committee will hear their regular reports and continue discussion on the Animal Control Building, the Judicial Committee. We'll hear their standard reports. As Chairman Hoffel reported, the committee will hear their regular reports from the Health Department and Animal Control. Tax Planning and Zoning Chairman Barr reported department heads will give their reports and the committee will take two action, will take action on two zoning variances. County Engineer Joel Moore reported the Highway Committee will hear their standard reports. Moore also reported the highway department was broken into recently. This resulted in the loss of the highway department's 18-volt Milwaukee tool. 
<clears throat> County Board Chairman Schur spoke to the committee about broadband. There's a company, NextLink, that has formed an alliance with Eastern Illini, and they want to install fiber and wireless to cover areas of the county that they claim don't have internet service. Next, NextLink is a Texas-based company. They have applied for funds through the Connect Illinois program and plan to apply for American Rescue Plan Act funds. Representative of the company stated they don't necessarily need the funding and will continue to go forward with the project. Chair sure said he is a strong advocate of broadband but will not be in favor of their request. EMA Director Sacy reported that he attended a quarterly IEMA Region 7 meeting in Decatur on March 3rd. Sacy met with the State Hazard Mitigation Officer on March 14th to go over the pending grant that was applied for. Casey has finished a sub-application for a grant to write the hazard mitigation plan. Naima has my confidence that the application will be approved. The grant application is for $57,000, of which 75% is federal funds, 25% is local matching. Naima has guaranteed that Iroquois County will not have to come up with their 25%. AC added Iroquois County is not competing with other counties for these funds, but the state is competing with other states. Over the past month, AC has gained access to a few different communication systems. These include DEPS and WPS. These are two different forms of phone call systems that will prioritize the traffic that is put into their systems in an emergency. Starcom 21 radio has been repaired. Lastly, the EMA department is a Winlink radio system that was donated to them. Winlink radio is another alternative form of radio email communication that is meant to be a backup system. Discussion was held on security at the administrative center. We met with County Board Member Bob Hopwell and ETS for Eric Raymond on March 14th. They both voiced their concern about security in the building. <laughs> County Clerk Brian Silver said a physical security assessment was done by the Department of Homeland Security and has requested an executive session during the management committee to discuss the results of the report. As he offered his opinion stating all but two doors in the building could remain locked at all times. The County Board could opt for a key fob system for their doors and install cameras where necessary. Parents asked for those comments and concerns contained to the safety of the building. Excuse me. Parents asked for those with comments and concerns pertaining to the safety of the building to attend the management meeting on April 4th. The committee discussed setting salaries for elected officials. Sure said he feels the salary schedule in place for the elected officials is appropriate when using percentages for wage increases. It widens the gap between the highest paid and lowest paid. Finance Manager Johnson provided the committee with a worksheet of proposed salaries based upon a flat dollar amount each year and based upon percentage increases each year. Sure suggested the circuit clerk salary be set for two years rather than four to get her back on the four-year rotation with the state's attorney and coroner. Sheriff Perzee distributed a proposed salary increase for the sheriff's position and enlisting of the sheriff's general duties. Perzee's information shows the highest paid lieutenant earning more each year than the sheriff. Sheriff said he doesn't disagree that the sheriff should be paid more than those he supervises, but finding the funds to do so can be difficult. After reviewing Perzee's Proposal Barons recommended spreading out the increase over the four year term rather than all at once in the first one. It was also noted that the stipend received by elected officials cannot be taken into consideration when setting salary. She also added that the treasurer position was given a lower salary four years ago and asked the committee to consider increasing the salary to each county clerk and circuit clerk. The committee came to the agreement of the following salaries for elected officials. Circuit clerk, 
year one, 1750 entries, year two, 1800 entries. County clerk, year one, 1750 entries, year two, 1800 entries, year three, 1850 entries, year four, 1900 entries. Treasurer, year one, 2200 entries, year two, 2200 entries, year three, 2200 entries, year four, 2200 entries. Sheriff, year one, 5,000 entries, year two, 5,000 entries, year three, 3,000 entries, year four, 3,000 entries. It was moved by Barron's and seconded by Alpha to set the elected official salaries as proposed. A roll call vote was taken, sure I, Barron's I, Alpha abstained, Bard I, Alpha I, motion carried. Finance Manager Joe Johnson reported on the sexual harassment training scheduling. The in-person training may be scheduled in June. ICRMT informed Johnson the training can also be done in-house. The portal is being set up for online completion. The committee discussed establishing an ordinance for raffles and poker runs. The ordinance was approved last month by the committee, but after discussion at the county board meeting, the ordinance was sent back to the committee for further discussion. Sure said he is not in favor of any changes and would like the ordinance to remain the same. It was moved by Bard and seconded by Alpha to present the ordinance establishing a system for the licensing of organizations to operate raffles and poker rounds in the county for approval and revised page six, paragraph one, to read County Board Chairman Allen or his designee. A roll call vote was taken. Sure I, Baron, Sustain, Alt I, Bard I, Alpha I, motion carried. Appointments include Supervisor of Assessments, five years of the reappointment. Correspondence was distributed to the committee. The committee reviewed the claims. It was moved by Alpha and seconded by Bard to pay the claims subject to county board approval. A roll call vote was taken, that motion carried. There was no old business, there was no new business. There was no further business to come before the committee. It was moved by Bard and seconded by Alpha to adjourn at 11.18 a.m. That motion carried by a voice vote, all of which was respectfully submitted, signed by all members present, and I move for the adoption of the report. Is there a second? This is Alpha. Is there any comments or questions regarding the report? And the clerk will call the roll, please. Baron? Yes. Bodger? Yes. Bowers? Yes. Spokenauer? No. Crow? Yes. Curtis? Yes. Hughes? Yes. Mignonet? No. Awful? Yes. Tenney? Yes. Sure? Yes. Zumwalt? Yes. Alt? Yes. Yes. Okay, the motion carries. Next is the management committee report, Mr. Barron. Mr. Chairman and members of the county board of information on this report of management services, which I believe to submit the following report of merit before them. Your committee met the administrative session on April 4, 2022, at 9 a.m. We were present for Barron, Bowers, Crow, and Zuma. Paul Lucas, Kevin Bowman, and Craig Johnson were absent. Also present, county board chairman John Schur, finance manager Joe Johnson. Management Supervisor Chris Drake, Coroner Bill Cheatham, DCS Director Eric Mann, and Barry Mahoney with CMT Construction. The meeting was called to order. It was moved by John Zumwalt, seconded by Paul Bowers to approve the agenda. The motion carried by a voice vote. There were no public comments. Management Supervisor Chris Drake reported, report concluded the following. No issues reported for the Royal Energy Council or Air Handler. Fire extinguishers were recertified. Metro Power Service to Generators, and I for upgraded gas meter at the Administrative Center. The break room is almost complete. The old cabinets need to be removed. No removal for the season resulted in 136 <laughs> bags of salt, two tanks of fuel in the F-250, two tanks of fuel for the kids here. Part-time employee works 32 hours, and a second snowblower was purchased for $700. Overall total cost of snow removal was $2,630 here. There was, a, there was no update on donations of trees from the All Hands family. The county farm file with the project was discussed. 
Dumont woke up, wrote up a note of inviting bids to be published. You'd like to have the memorandum of understanding agreement to by the two landlords before sending the project out to bid. State Attorney Jim Vine has requested legal descriptions for the MO room. Discussion list held on the animal control building. Paul Bowers provided a real estate listing for a building for sale in Crescent City at a cost of $260,000. Wayne <coughs> Mahoney, the team key construction, distributed a projected square foot summary for the building and provided drawings. Corner Bill Cheatham spoke on behalf of his request for a mortgage. Cheatham proposed a 30 foot by 40 foot building. He did some Cheatham said he is not in favor of the possible new. He's not in favor of the possible new building location as used by the administrative center and he would prefer those nine yard building. The committee entertained the idea of keeping the two buildings separate due to noise and smell. Finance manager Joe Denson recommended removing the area for the break room and combining the waiting room and office. The building will not have employees there at all times. Some of the, uh, these items are not necessary. The committee discussed removing the Sally port instead of installing a fence which will allow vehicles to pull in and deliver animals while addressing the space for kennels. Johnson said there have been seven dogs total in animal control possession at one time. Per ordinance, the animals are held are to be held for 10 days, but we have been holding them longer to allow time for them to be reunited with the owner or place in a shelter or rescue. Mr. Mahoney will create updated drawings for the committee in terms of separating the buildings and offer an estimate, estimated cost for the next meeting. It is moved by Bauer, second by Donna Crow to enter into executive session at 10.25 a.m. under 5 ILCS 120-2-C8. Security procedures, school building safety, and security and the use of personal and equipment to respond to actual to an actual threat or reasonable potential danger to the safety of employees, students, staff, or public or public property. Motion carried by board vote. It is moved by Dumont, second by Crow to come out of executive session at 11.4 a.m. Motion carried by board vote. The committee reviewed the plans. It was moved by Crow and second by Bauer to pay claims subject to county board approval. A roll call vote was taken. Motion carried. If there is no old business or no new business. If there is no further business to come before the committee, it is moved by Bowers and second by Dumont to adjourn at 11.34 a.m. Motion carried. All of this is respectfully submitted and I move for its adoption. There's a motion on the floor to approve the minutes of the committee report. Is there a second, Mr. Bowers? Are there any questions or comments regarding the report? Seeing <coughs> none, the clerk will call the roll, please. Roger. Yes. Bowers. Yes. Kokenauer. Yes. 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 Okay, we'll move on to the House Committee report, Mr. Dolphin. Good morning. Mr. Chairman and members of the County Board, your committee to whom was referred to help would beg leave to submit the following report on the matters before them. Your committee met at the Administrative Center on April 5th, 2022 at 9 a.m. Members present were Alto, Bard, Curtis, and Scherr. Kevin Kopenauer and Thomas Lent were absent. Also present, Finance Manager Jill Johnson, ICPHD Administrator Dean Shepard. <coughs> the meeting was called to order. It was moved by Eric Curtis and seconded by Roger Bard to approve the agenda. Motion carried by a voice vote. The committee reviewed the claims. It was moved by Bard and seconded by Curtis to pay the claims, subject to Kevin for approval. A roll call vote was taken, motion carried. <clears throat> there were no public comments. Finance manager Jill Johnson reported there is one dog bite case open. There were 18 cases closed in March, which includes five dog bites, six loose dogs reclaimed by owners, 
and seven dogs bites with rescues or shelters. The registration deposit for March is $6,930. Johnson is working on the animal for a license renewal. The management committee is still in discussion on the animal control building. The animal control wardens are working on a hoarding situation in Lapo, and there is an animal cruelty investigation outside of the market involving livestock. Johnson stated there is a 10-day hold for cats and dogs per the county's ordinance. However, the animals have been held longer in an effort to get them placed appropriately. Since the Johnson's appointment as Animal Control Administrator, only one animal has been humanely euthanized due to its extremely aggressive nature and the dog bit a child. ICPHD Administrator Lee Shipper reported the health department is working on getting back to normal and returning to home visits. Chip said the staff will begin using the XRF machine to detect lead-based paint on walls and homes. It has been determined that children with high lead levels in their blood tend to be hyperactive and have developmental delays. Senior home visits will also resume. <coughs> Shepard reported there were nine COVID-19 cases last week. There were 20 cases reported the previous week. Cases from March totaled 76 and February totaled 439. The fourth booster is available at the health department in no charge. Appointments are preferred, but they do accept walk-ins. Overall, there have been a total of 7,152 lab confirmed cases and 127 deaths associated with COVID-19. COVID-19 vaccination statistics are as follows. 48.63% of Iroquois County is fully vaccinated. Ages 5 through 11, 9.83 percent. Ages 12 through 17, 29.2 percent. Ages 18 through 64, 50.19 percent. Ages 65 plus, 77.37 percent. Illinois Department of Public Health is now allowing the health department to accept positive health test results. Shepard said there is still grant money available to help those quarantined or isolated at home. Shepard reviewed the summary report of programs with the committee. Environmental health issued five temporary food treatments, performed 40 food inspections, and three inspections. <clears throat> there were two boil orders issued in March. There were 24 water samples received and 11 radon kits received. The health department issued one permit for a new well, performed seven new well inspections, and two sealed well inspections. There were 65 childhood immunizations and seven adult immunizations. Shepard reported four animal bites for the month. Shepard discussed the international travel consultants offered by the health department stating if you are planning for traveling internationally, the death department, the health department can inform you of what immunizations are needed, what diseases are circulating in the area you are traveling to and where the dangerous areas are. There were 11 developmental screens done in March and one court ordered for curious day. The health department held 19 educational presentations, two press releases. The jail program offered four inmate assessments. Vision and hearing screens include 201 vision screens and 232 hearing screens. <clears throat> there are 182 clients in the community care program. The health department will be holding a babysitting class at cost of $35. County Board Chairman John Kerr announced to the committee that this week is Public Health Department Week. He was moved by Sherry and seconded by Bard to commend and recognize the health department for their excellent service and dedication to duty that has been demonstrated for Iroquois County. Motion carried by a voice vote. Shepard added she is so grateful for her staff and their dedication to the community. There is a public health shortage right now in Illinois. Many health departments lost large numbers of their staff during the pandemic because the situation was too overwhelming. Shepard said ICPHD only lost two employees due to retirement. There was no old business, there was no new business. As there was <clears throat> no further business to come before the committee, it was moved by first and second by Bart to adjourn at 9.33 a.m. Motion carried by a voice vote all of which is respectfully submitted and I move to adoption. Thank you, motion. I have a board to approve the House Committee Report. Is there a second? Mr. Union. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. 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 Thank you,
Are there any questions or comments about the report? I have one question for the state's attorney. Is it possible that you can give us an update on the progress of the animal cruelty case? Uh, no, I don't comment on existing cases. That is not for public consumption. Okay. Very good. That's where we're at. <laughs> there are no further questions or comments. The clerk will call the roll, please. Bowers? Yes. Token Hours? Yes. Crow? Yes. Curtis? Yes. Hughes? Yes. McGinnis? <clears throat> Awful. Yes. Penny. Yes. Sure. Yes. Dumoul. Yes. Alt. Yes. Bard. Yes. Barron. Yes. Slasher. Okay. Tax planning and zoning committee, Mr. Bard. <coughs> Mr. Chairman and members of the County Board, your committee to whom was referred to act zoning would beg you to submit the following report on the matters before them. Your committee met, met at the Administrative Center on April 5th, 2022 at 9.40 a.m. Members present were Bard, McGinnis, Curtis, and Alford. Coconar was absent. Also present, County Board Chairman Schur, Finance Manager Johnson, Treasurer Kurt Elvis, County Clerk Stuber, ICPHD Administrator Schimmer, Tim and Lori Hickman, Matt Kester, John Bolotsky, Jake Bramer, and Doug Hahn. The meeting was called to order. It was moved by Barb Goffel and seconded by Ernie Curtis to approve the agenda. Motion carried by a voice vote. The committee re reviewed the claims. It was moved by Curtis and seconded by Offal to pay the claims subject to county board approval. A roll call vote was taken, motion carried. There were no public comments. <clears throat> the department heads gave their monthly reports. Treasurer Kurt Albers reported he is waiting on the state to approve the tax levy that was submitted. County Clerk Brian Suver reported assessment rolled to the county clerk's office on March 21st. Abstracts were approved and balanced and mailed to the state on March 23rd. There is usually a four week turnaround before receiving receipt of the abstracts. And there is a list of questions that are mailed to supervisor of assessment, Bob Yergler. Suver and Yergler received and answered the required questions on April 1st. Suver anticipates receiving the final multiplier within the next week. Suver also reported there is one county board seat in District 3 without a candidate running on the June 28th ballot. Anyone can run as a write-in now through the end of April. Last two, the House Ethics Committee met last week regarding the statements of economic interest. The planning and zoning report for April was reviewed. Discussion was held on the application of Tim and Lori Hickman for a resuming rezoning variance from B1 commercial to RR1 residential for the purpose of occupancy as a home. Mrs. Hickman explained the property has been on the market for two and a half years as a commercial building and hasn't received any offers. They decided to list the home as residential and has received a contingent offer. However, the buyer's lender will not allow the tax to move the, will not allow the buyer to move forward until the property is zoned as residential. Tax Zoning Chairman Roger Bard informed the committee that Zoning and Board approved their application on March 29th. It was moved by Tad McGinnis and seconded by Alpha to approve the application from Tim and Lori Hickman for a rezoning variance. A roll call was taken, motion carried. Discussion was held on the application of John and Brittany 
for a rezoning variance from A1 to RH1 for the purpose of building a home. Mr. Nolan's act explained to the committee that he and his wife would like to build a home on the property. Those in opposition included Jake Raymer and Doug Hahn. Mr. Raymer told the committee he farms next to the location or the no west are looking to build. He has offered to the, buy the property and use it as an easement. He would also like to prevent having nuisance neighbors. Mr. Hahn stated his property taxes will increase if a home is built on the property. Matt Kester, father-in-law of John, owns acreage that surrounds the property. The property the NOAX are looking to build on is unfarmable. Mr. Kester said it is important to know that John and Brittany are no, not relocating to Chicago. They both grew up in Martinton Township and Sister Park. It was moved by McGinnis and seconded by Awful to recommend approval of the rezoning with the variance of John and Brittany to the county board. A roll call was taken, motion carried. Super presented a monthly resolution should a list showing the one parcel being sold by the county trustee. The parcel is located in the city of Watsika. The tax agent is surrendering, sur surrendering the certificate to the owner of the property. It was moved by Awful and seconded by McGinnis to approve the re resolution authorizing the sale of property located in the city of Watsika. A roll call vote was taken, motion carried. Discussion on building permit enforcing fines and penalties was tabled until the next meeting. Discussion on publication of rural homesteads was tabled until the next meeting. During home business, McGinnis provided information on many storage facilities that was provided to him from United Counties Council of Illinois. There is no new business. And as, as there was no further business come before the committee, it was moved by Awful and seconded by Curtis to adjourn at 10, 12 a.m. Motion carried by Rose Voice. Voice, voice vote, all of which is very respectfully committed, submitted, and I move for its approval. There's a motion on the floor to approve the tax planning and zoning committee report. Is there a second? This is Awful. Are there any questions or comments regarding the report? Mrs. Crow. Well, what did Mr. McGinnis Can you speak in? in your microphone, please? Oh, okay. <coughs> um, what did Mr. McGinnis find out from the um, UTCI? Is there a on the subject of many? Can you speak in the microphone, please? Kendall County sent us a sample ordinance that I passed out to the committee to look at. Are there any other questions or comments? Seeing none, the clerk will call the roll, please. Cook in order. Yes. Crow. Yes. Curtis. Yes. Hughes. Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, McGinnis. Yes. Awful. Yes. Honey? Yes. Yes. Sure? Yes. Dumont? Yes. Alt? Sorry, yes, Charlie. Yes. Okay, thank you. Ard? Yes. Darren? Yes. Osher? Yes. Sorry, I got off. Alt? Sorry. <laughs> and one more Bowers. Yes. Okay, motion carried. <laughs> All right, Judicial Committee report. Mr. Bannon. Mr. Chairman, and members of the County Board, the committee to whom we refer judicial and public safety to a text to leave this following report on matters before us. Your committee met at the courthouse on April 6, 2022, at 3 p.m. Members of Article Barron, Kukov, Washburn, McGinnis, and McKinney. It's also brought in County Board Chairman John Schur, Sheriff Spencer D., Norman Bill Tatum, Probation Supervisor Carl King, Circuit Clerk Lisa Hines, and EPS Director Eric Brandon. The meeting was called to order. It was moved by Dukov, seconded by Foster to approve the agenda. Motion carried by voice vote. There were no public comments. 
Sheriff Clinton received the minutes and points to report from the committee as follows. Two deputies hired in March, one for the approved assistant park contract and one for deputy position that will become vacant. Their start date is April 19th and they will enter a 14 week academy on May 4th. One correctional officer was hired for an open position with a start date of late April. Corrections applications were accepted and will possibly have four to five part time corrections officers to reduce the burden of overtime for staff. Telecourt telehealth project is in the works with judges and consultation. Medical assist recovery program is continuing, and our Air Force Memorial nurse practitioner has been able to treat inmates with the necessary medications specific to their withdrawal issues. Your Quinn Memorial is providing or offering MAR aftercare once an inmate bonds out or has been released. 47 arrests intakes in March. March jail population 19, 15 male, 3 female, and one on ankle bracelet and zero weekend. March medical, nine doctor hospital emergency room visits this month, one mental health visit to the jail, zero lab visits by Air Force Memorial. Six nurse practitioner visits every other Monday, six public health intake exams every Thursday, one telephone assessment with your brother Roy Hospital nurse practitioner for MAR, one dentist visit. Jail overtime for March 212 hours, for MAR for March 8th. Probation Supervisor Barb King reviewed the probation report services activity report for March to this committee. King presented proclamation declaring capable of child abuse prevention month. Is moved by Duke Law, second by David Penny, to approve the proclamation declaring April as child abuse prevention month. Motion carried by a voice vote. Circuit Clerk Lisa Hines distributed her monthly report for March to the committee for their review. The total of $61,578.15 was received from clients and fees. $8,145.58 was received from state court and $1,111.15 was received from Hydra. Hines also reported to us contact about placing a pot machine and vending machine at the courthouse. The vendor of fire service snacks donates 10% of the proceeds to local fire department. The review will reach out to the vendor. ETS Director Eric Raymond reviewed his monthly report with the committee, bringing the final interview scheduled for April 7th to the total vacancy. Raymond is meeting with the Recovery services on April 8th. Their services could potentially provide additional education for public communicators <laughs> related to mental health and substance abuse. The American Rescue Plan Act Committee approved the request for the CAD software. ETSD is entertaining a new phone, a new phone purchase. Raymond has encountered some issues with AT&T as far as not being able to receive customer service after hours. If the purchase is made, ETSD will be responsible for the cost. Currently, the county is responsible and the amount is calculated in the ETSD rental contract. A change to the price per square foot will need to be made to remove this phone charge. Raymond says this part of the phone system is not for next generation 911 grant. Raymond has applied for next generation 911 grant that will cover a GIS flyover updates to the phone system due to the current phone system being out of compliance and additional GIS work to determine all layers sync up with the rest of the state. There is no old business, there is no new business. The committee reviewed the claim to the by Duke Law, second by Penny, to pay the judicial publication by subject to the approval. Roll call vote was taken, motion carried. If there is no further business to come before the committee, it is moved by McGinnis and seconded by Oscar to adjourn the meeting at 3.22 p.m. Motion carried by a voice vote. All business is respectfully submitted and moved for adjournment. There's a motion on the floor to approve the Judicial Committee report. Is there a second? Mr. Bard, are there any questions or comments regarding the report? Seeing none, the clerk will call the roll, please. Crow? Yes. Curtis? Yes. Hughes? Yes. McGinnis? Yes. Offal? Yes. Penny? Yes. Sure. Yes. Zumwalt. Yes. Alt. Yes. Bard. Yes. Barron. Yes. Bacher. Yes. Bowers. Yes. Coconauer. Yes.
Committee, Finance Committee, Mr. Rall. Mr. Chairman, members of the County Board, this committee. This one was referred by Ned I C with the state police to submit the following report and the members before them. The committee had administration signed on April 7, 2011. The member, President Will Michael McTaggart, voted on all the all ballots. Any service was deemed due. Chairman Thompson was asked and also present. County Board Chairman Tom Sheriff Finance. Andrew Peel Thompson, Sheriff Flint. Cooper County Clerk. William Cooper, Treasurer Sheriff Elder. DMA Director Eric CCETS Director Eric Raymond. Myron Munyon with Campus Insurance. Susie Warner with Home Star Insurance. Michael David and Bernie Marty with Area Wide Technologies. IEDA Director Angel Faulkner. Meeting was by order. It was moved by Joe Young and seconded by Steve Hughes to approve the agenda. Motion carried by a vote of four. There was no public comment. Myron Munyon, Campus Insurance Report. No activity for the month. Susie Warner with Home Star Insurance. Report there was a grant to the planning team. Going from Blue Cross Blue Shield to Benefit County Consultants. But that was, that has been resolved. Michael Tabor and I with Area Wide Technology gave his report as follows. All of the two projects are in the works. The server is almost complete. They are waiting on equipment for the sale of the server and new storage server. Tabor announced he is leaving Area Wide and burning the party to the county. New project manager started. Has been with Area Wide for three years and has 25 years experience in the IT field. Departments that gave their monthly report. So they were as follows. DPS Director Eric Raymond reports he is hiring for one technical computer and final interviews are being held today. Raymond has a meeting on Friday with addiction recovery services. They can provide continuing education for the telecommunicators. The American Rescue Plan Act Committee approved the application for CAD software. DPSB is entertaining a DOIP system similar to the application for CAD software. DPSB is entertaining a DOIP system similar to Social Mystics Center and the courthouse currently used. Raymond said he said he has been experienced issues with AT&T when it comes to after our support. Unfortunately, there isn't any next generation 911 funds for this phone system. If DPSB chooses to move forward, the rent will need to be reduced because DPSB will be handling their own phone charges. Currently, the phone charges are your clerk guy responsibility and the cost is included in DPSB's monthly rent. I need to on grant money to cover the cost of a call for explaining GIS flyover and maintenance schedule and memorandum of understanding for the CAD system was signed by the DPS board last night. DMA Director Eric CC reports DMA has finished the application for the hazardous mitigation plan. CC has confirmed confident that the application will be approved. Treasurer Sir Albert reports the assessment zoning has flowed to the county clerk's office. They are waiting on a multiplier. County Clerk Brian Suber reports that that's right, the balance of mail to the city. On April 1st, Superintendent of Assessment Andre received an email from the state 
from the Department of Revenue to require a 1% pledge. Trigger has responded to the Department of Revenue with a required one. So Trigger has responded to also working on fiscal upgrades in the county clerk's office and storage room. Chair of Clint, for these reports, we have been derived in March from the approval our contract and the board of deputies position that will become vacant. The deputies will start on April 19th and will enter 14 weeks at Academy on March on May 4th. Corrections officer Jesse Wolkenberger moved to approve and just the city of Atlanta required to be there. Existing part time corrections officer Taylor Luderness for the full time vacancy correction position. Corrections to application was accepted in the bill. We have four to five part time correction officers to reduce the burden of overtime to establish the overtime salary to manage the department. Other document management service is still proposed and requested by ICRST. Before implementing the proposed system of jail, the patrol investigation ICRST has offered to pay for the service for at least the first year and possibly longer if the pilot program reduces the liability claims that they have to pay out. We are not obligated to continue the service beyond this contract. It would be a reimbursement contract in which we would reimburse the county for the total balance of the service contract paid out. The balance of paid out is $200 and will be taken next month on the power EMS program. The village has also spoke to the system for our representatives and is interested in participating in a contract with the patrol service. They have been made aware that the contract will possibly start in October to bring new services for the patrol to put out the bid. We currently do not have a contract with Omnic County's current service provider. For these, as they have been having issues with Omnic service and food water. For the looking into upgrade the radio system for the sheriff's department also salary concern. For the received a proposal for block automatic license plate readers. The city of Gilman and the city of Wasika are purchasing two cameras each and other buildings can be asked to participate. For the would like to see the county purchase three cameras. Three cameras, excuse me. There is a requirement to contract for five cameras at a cost of $4,500 each. The cameras, the requirement will be placed in a strategic place of location within Iroquois County and photographs will be able to provide the place of vehicle. This allows for the photograph to be searched by plate, vehicle type, vehicle color, specific vehicle marking. Block camera system will assist the burglary, fuel thefts, and general investigation. Finance, IT chairman Mike Montaggart agrees this is a service that would be beneficial to the county as a large as Iroquois County and the county's income from the public safety fund. There were 47 arrests in the month of March jail. The program is at 19, 16 male, three female, one on ankle bracket, Frank Breck, correct answer, zero week, weekender. Medical included nine doctors, hospital, emergency room, doctor, business doctor, some mental health, business, sick nurse service, every other month, funding, six public health intake. 
Secretary of Jersey, one telephone assistant, seven of the nurse practitioners, the nurse at Queen Mental Hospital, and one general visit. The other four times of March was 212 hours and nine hours for part time officers. County Board Chairman John Shergrass is funding the Joint Dispatch Church. He has a with three different methods that include keeping the same process, calculating your rate based upon cost of service, and then determine your rate based on the EAV of each different period and take into the energy of blanket entry. In the past, the city of Wasik and her flight down course equal and there is what the investing is based in the but fail to say it was moved and staggered and seconded by Hughes to continue utilizing the current plan in place and for the funding of the funding of John Joint Dispatch has been shared by his old friend Corporal Charles Rogers Senior. That will be required will be prepared and mailed to all agencies in Going down to the city. Finance Manager Jim Johnson provided a committee brief. Spreadsheet containing revenues and expenses from the public safety tax fund for the past several years. The current balance in the fund is $567,255 and $425,000 expected for 2022. That is that is for 2022 includes 200,000 for vehicle for the sheriff's department, 120,000 for joint dispatch. So he said he would like to see a long term visit of this fund. Sure, that is that the use of the fund needs to be verified. If you're reminded, committee, that there are three union contracts to be good negotiated this year. Staggered we find two sets of the camera issue stating that the purchase should come from the from this fund. It was moved by Young and second by all to enter into an agreement with the city of Wasik and the city of Gilman for payment for the two block cameras each and three additional cameras purchased to be safety public safety tax funds. <coughs> Costing two for twenty five hundred dollars each. Total cost for a full vote. Let's take a motion, Chair. Let me discuss the hiring of ten correctional officers for the jail. The board ordered us from the ten jail to staff for ten correctional officers for the jail matters later. <coughs> One employee resigned in the jail mission position was eliminated. Since that time, Lieutenant Raymond Mofield has been covering the jail administration division along with the other duties. Now, overall, this has been a cost living to the county. The average cost of our overtime in 2021 was $70,000. Today, the assistant correction officer will be approximately $40,000. Johnson added the average overtime cost from 2012 to 2021 was $58,000 per year, included nine correctional officers and two part time correctional officers. I decided to suggest the discussion of having additional correctional officers be held in the budget hearing. I decided to open the bids for the GAV on Southwell Tower, Central Square, $256,231.11. For the notice, DA fund approving for this project was $219,991.51 plus $38,000 will be paid from PTSD. He was moved from Taggart and seconded by House by Hughes to accept the bid providing by Central Square for the CAV program in the amount of $256,231.11. Proceed with signing a contract. A roll call vote was taken and staggered a down a young asset to all in it a powers a service a use a motion carried.
Committee report is there a second? The views. Are there any questions or comments on the report? Mrs. Crow. Um, the speak in the microphone, please. The salaries in the one hundred and twenty thousand for the joint dispatch, is that a one time thing? Or um, could you give us more explanation on that? Or is that going to be a recurring expense? That's an annual expense that we set at the budget here. So how many years have we been doing that? Um, the last three years we have given some funds out of the public safety tax fund to subsidize those salaries. Any other questions or comments? Yes. It says there is a requirement to contract for five cameras. What is the thing that determines that requirement? Sheriff, would you like to answer that? That would be the clock system. They require for a county of our size five cameras uh, to get the best use out of the system. So Gilman has pledged uh, two cameras and Watsika has pledged to get one or uh, two cameras. Um, we've also in the process of talking with Milford uh, to get additional cameras as well on the system. The more cameras we have, the better we're able to cover the county. Okay, it says we'll assist in burglaries, fuel thefts, and general investigations. Well, fuel thefts are, from what I read and hear, are taking place out in the country at farmers' places. So if you've got cameras here, and where would you have the cameras? Are you going to have them out in the country, or what's the situation? We could have them in the country. Um, a lot of times they'll travel state routes. Uh, to get to certain locations. If we have a suspect vehicle, um, be it a plate or a color or a make and model, uh, we can search the cameras in the area uh, for that vehicle. Okay, how will you know that they've stolen fuel? Well, that's part of the investigation. We would eliminate people part of that investigation. It would just give us an extra tool uh, to go on, like say say the county highway got broken into, uh, and we had a camera on Route One. Um, the camera at Hogan Walker showed a blue vehicle going northbound from the county highway's parking lot, and then that camera at Route One, 30 seconds later, catches the plate on that vehicle. Now we know specifically what vehicle we need to go after. So that gives us an exact plate and, uh, and person to go after as opposed to just searching for a blue vehicle because they could have been from Hobart, Indiana. Okay, so thank you. You're welcome. Are there any other questions or comments? So you know the clerk will call the roll, please. Curtis? Yes. Hughes? <clears throat> McGinnis? Yes. Awful? Yes. Penny? Yes. Sure? Yes. Zumwalt? Yes. Alt? Yes. Bard? Yes. Barron? Yes. Botcher? Yes. Uh, Bauer? Yes. Kokenauer? And Crow. Okay, ARPA committee. This is awful. Yes, Mr. Chairman and members of the county board, your committee to whom was referred American Rescue Plan Act, ARPA, would beg leave to submit the following report on the matters before them. 
Your committee met at the Administrative Center on March 14, 2022 at 9 a.m. Members present were Paul Duque, Donna Crow, Barbara Alton, and John Schur. Charlie Alt was absent. Also present, Finance Manager Jill Johnson, ATS Director Eric Raymond, and IEDA Director Amy Jill Crawford. <clears throat> The meeting was called to order. It was moved by John Scherer and seconded by Apple to approve the agenda. Motion carried by a voice vote. There were no public comments. Finance Manager Jill Johnson provided the committee with an updated worksheet on all applications submitted and allocation percentages. Paul Duquette said he would like to continue working with department heads on their needs before moving on to his infrastructure request. Additional administrative items from the department heads include repairing a roof for the highway department additional information from coroner bill cheatham regarding his cooler and maintenance supervisor chris drake is is preparing a list of his needs duquette is also expecting more applications for infrastructure needs in addition john sure asked the committee to seriously consider airplane memorial hospital's application duquette said <coughs> uh, he has had conversations with Cheatham about the space he is requesting. Ducat is in agreement with their application submitted and would like to see the options of including this space with animal patrol and without animal patrol. Regarding animal patrol, Chair would like to find a way to get the county's present needs taken care of with the option of expanding at a later date if necessary. Donna Crow stated the county cannot expect other counties such as Kankakee County, Ford County, and Vermillion County to continue assisting us as the animal situation can you, to, continues to worsen. Sure reminded the committee that we are not a licensed shelter or licensed to adopt animals out. They are to be held for 10 days per statute. Duquette suggested $500,000 be set aside to meet the needs for animal control and corn. County services request to include $500,000 for election equipment for the county clerk's office. Treasurer Kirk Alvarez is waiting on folks for security cameras and Ducat would like to see a walk-up window for the treasurer's office. Pro asks that the committee begin focusing more on the public sector due to a lot of funds being provided to county services. Other items that have been requested but not yet approved include no touch equipment for the sheriff's department. Flat tops and miscellaneous items for the public defender and signed for the highway department. Finance manager Joe Johnson noted there is a budget amount for office expense for the public defender. The Iroquois County Historical Society has submitted a request that needs to be further discussed once the required additional documentation is received. <clears throat> Pro reminded the committee that the ladies at the Historical Society are retired volunteers and they probably haven't had to get bids from companies very often. It's important to find out, <coughs> excuse me, what will make the old courthouse building structurally sound, such as window and roof replacement. Sure added the county needs to take a more active role in maintaining the building, and Ducat suggested a meeting be held at the old courthouse. The committee will await additional bids from the Historical Society and consider approving a portion of their request. The highway department's request for sign replacement was discussed. Last month, County Engineer Joe, Joe Moore explained the reflective material on the signs is very warm. The quote presented to the committee was not accurate and Moore is requesting additional bid. <coughs> the committee revisited the application submitted by Dr. Stanford for water meter replacement in the amount of $40,000. Johnson stated they have returned all required documentation requested by the committee. It was moved by Crow and seconded by Kurt to adopt a resolution approving the village of Danvers an application amount of $40,000 for their water project. A roll call vote was taken, motion carried. The city of Gillen requests $250,000 for infrastructure. Sure offered to speak with the mayor of Gillen regarding their application. Health check health. Coaching Incorporated submitted an application amount of $45,000 for economic assistance. They have provided all necessary documentation. The committee requests they attend a meeting and formally present their application. <clears throat> St. Paul's Lutheran School is requesting $22,000 for water chemical remover. Uh, County Board Member Joe Young is in support of the application and has asked the committee for their support as well. The committee requests additional questions for the next meeting. 
the committee reviewed the application for Millbrook Park and Pool Foundation for revenue loss and not fundraising. It was moved by Alpha and seconded by Crow to adopt a resolution approving Millbrook Park and Pool Foundation's application in the amount of $9,000. A roll call vote was taken, motion carried. Iroquois Memorial Hospital previously presented their application for $600,000 for carpet replacement, sparking up the finishing, telemetry, and pharmacy upgrades. Johnson suggested the committee review the telemetry and pharmacy upgrade request. The Sheriff's Department County employees utilize their pharmacy. Johnson will request quotes for these uh, items as well as quotes for their negative pressure work. Johnson added, she suggests the committee set a flat amount to be distributed to individuals that have applied for assistance. The individuals should also be educated about other programs available in the county district. Sure, ask the committee to consider approving village of the monitor's application for sewer drainage, Iroquois Memorial Hospital's application, and St. Paul's Lutheran Church education at the next proper meeting. There were no old business during the new business, i.e., VA Director Angel Proper told the committee she will be forwarding information to them about the Illinois Public Museum Capital Grant. She has also sent this <coughs> information <coughs> excuse me, to the old courthouse museum. Funding is open to any museum operated by local government or local uh, located on municipality owned land. Matching funds are required. <clears throat> if there was no further business to come for the committee, it was moved by Alpha and second by Church at their extensive at 5 a.m. Motion carried by a voice vote, all of which is respectfully submitted. Do you want me to continue on with the next one? or? <clears throat> <clears throat> Mr. Chairman and members of the County Board, your committee to whom was restored American Rescue Plan and CARPA would beg leave to submit the following report on the matters before them. Your committee met at the Administrative Center on April 8, 2022 at 10 a.m. Members present were Paul Ducat, Charlie Paul, John McCrow, Barbara Alton, and John Shirk. Also present finance manager Jill Johnson, ECS Director Eric Raymond, ICHT <clears throat> Administrator D. Shepard, EMA Director Eric CC, IEDA Director Angel Crawford, Kim Ravidu, and Kim Spear with Airplane Mental Health Center, Brad Miller with Portable Solutions, Andrea Noon and Kathy Edwards with Health Check, John Marquez and Monika Sky with Addiction Recovery Services and Mike Tills present at Iroquois County, Iroquois Memorial Hospital. <clears throat> The meeting was called to order. It was moved by John Schur and seconded by Barbara Alton to approve the agenda. Motion carried by a voice vote. <clears throat> there were no com public comments. Kim Rabideau and Kim Spear with Iroquois Mental Health Center and Brad Miller with Orvis Solutions spoke to the committee regarding the application submitted for the Iroquois Mental Health Center. Our chairman Paul Duke had addressed the items they are applying for, such as computers and telephones, and asked that these would be used in other county. To explain that the hub of Iroquois Mental Health Center is in Watsika and these items will be used for Iroquois County. The survey will be organizational wide. Sure added if they have operations in other counties, they should also plan to apply for funds for those counties. <coughs> Iroquois Mental uh, Health Center has already purchased their phone system and the funds requested will be reimbursed. Reimbursement. They have uh, received COVID relief and PPP funds for payroll and other items. All of these funds have been utilized. Kathy Edwards and Andrea Nims with Health Check addressed the committee regarding the application they submitted in the amount of $45,000. Health Check provides lab work at lower cost. During the COVID-19 pandemic, hours were cut and employees were let go. The funds they are requesting would be used to hire <coughs> more employees and upgrade equipment. They have provided the committee with financial documentation showing the loss of revenue from 2019 to 2020. Ms. Edwards and Ms. Nims will send two quotes to the committee for the items they are purchasing. Is it, <coughs> the committee began their review of ARPA applications as follows. Application number 24, Village of Arnaga. Village of Arnaga has provided all required documentation. It was moved by Sheriff and seconded by Alpha. To adopt a resolution approving the Village of Anaga's application in the amount of $49,125. A roll call vote was taken, motion carried. 
Application number 35, the garage in Gilman. Sir inquired on the ownership of the building. It was confirmed that the building was donated and ownership belonged to the garage. They also own the lot next to the building. It is recommended to have a representative attend the next meeting. Application number 41, St. Paul's with the church. They are requesting $22,000 for water, chemical, and liver. Folks were received in the amount of $21,590 for the project. It is moved by Donna Crow and second by Sherrod that Dr. Luke Pollution approve the St. Paul's Lutheran Church application in the amount of $21,590. A roll call vote for it was taken. Motion carried. <coughs> application number 57, Sonia DeLong. Ms. DeLong has provided all Required documentation between two years of tax returns, copies of utilities, and quote for her firm's repair and a letter from her financial institution confirmed her delinquent payment on her home. Crow asked that all individuals applying be considered as a whole and the committee decide on a flat dollar amount to be distributed. Application number 47, City of Gilman. <clears throat> Their application in the amount of $250,000 is for the purpose of sewer system line. They received DARPA funds in September of 2021, and those funds have been expended. It is noted that the City of Gilman has not been paying their annual fee for Johnson's tax services. Sure said he will have a conversation with the mayor of Gilman. Johnson will also email at the request for quotes. <coughs> Application number 66, Village of Buckley. They are requesting $87,785. For drainage tile, their application states that they have received 73,681.76 in ARPA funds, and the committee would like to know if these funds have been expended. <coughs> application 68 and 70, Village of Donovan. The Village of Donovan is requesting 48,500 for a pump house and 50,000 for a backup well house. They have submitted all required documents. It was moved by Shear <clears throat> and seconded by office to adopt a resolution approving Village of Donovan's application in the amount of 48500 for a pump house. A roll call vote was taken, vote motion carried. It was moved by Crow and seconded by Shear to adopt a resolution approving Village of Donovan's application in the amount of 50000 for a backup well house. A roll call vote was taken, motion carried. <clears throat> application number 77, Martinton Drainage District number 3. The application is for the drainage tile in the amount of $49,000. However, they have not provided any quotes to the committee. <clears throat> the committee requests a representative from the Martinson Drainage District number three to attend the next meeting. Application number 36, Iroquois Memorial Hospital. Iroquois Memorial Hospital has requested $600,000 for items including parking lot repair, carpet replacement, two negative pressure rooms, upgrades to the helipad, and upgrades to the pharmacy and telemetry system. IT PhD administrator D. Shepard stressed the importance of having negative pressure rooms in the hospital. It is moved by Crow and seconded by office to adopt a resolution to approve the Iroquois Memorial Hospital application in amount of $259,000 for the purpose of upgrading <coughs> their pharmacy system. <coughs> A roll call vote was taken. Motion carried. It was moved by Alpha and second by Crow to adopt a resolution approving Iroquois Memorial Hospital's application in the amount of $81,000 for the purpose of upgrading their telemetry system. A roll call vote was taken. Motion carried. It was moved by Sherry and seconded by Alpha to adopt a resolution approving Iroquois Memorial Hospital's application in the amount of $58,000 for the purpose of creating two negative net pressure rooms. A roll call vote was taken. Motion carried. It was moved by Pro and seconded by Alpha to adopt a resolution approving Iroquois Memorial Hospital's application in the amount of $70,000 for the purpose of, of upgrading the helipad. A roll call vote was taken. Motion carried. It was moved by Alpha and seconded by Sure to adopt a resolution approving Iroquois Memorial Hospital's application in the amount of $100,000 for the purpose of parking lot repairs. A roll call vote was taken. Motion carried. <coughs> application number 13. Addiction Recovery Services. Addiction Recovery Services requested $500,000 for behavioral health services in Iroquois County. Their main office is in Chicago, but they are looking to lease a space in the county. Addiction Recovery Services receives $200,000 in grant funds from Iroquois Mental Health. John Marquise and Monica explained their facility has a 
patient would have their preventive death at no cost to the patient. The patient would be assigned jobs during their stay during moving towards their care. All funds requested will be used in Iroquois County. They have been in contact with Sheriff Clint Christie for services needed in the jail, and they have an upcoming meeting with EPS Director F. Eric C. C. Rain of Eric Raymond to provide training for the telecommunicators. Addiction recovery services also provide telehealth services. The committee requests that additional time to consider this request. Application number 33, Iroquois County Historical Society. They are requesting funds for repairs to the old courthouse building, $215,500. The Historical Society has provided the committee with a copy of the PPP application profit and loss statement and quotes for repairs. <coughs> they have received grant money from <coughs> the from Schomburg Trust and Iroquois Federal Foundation. Sure suggest they're approving funds for repairs that will make the building structurally sound the committee and says they will present at the time of the next meeting. Application number 73, Iroquois County Boardroom. <coughs> A request has been made in the amount of 8000 $67.88 to update the AV equipment in the boardroom. The updates will be handled by Area Wide Technologies. Johnson said Area Wide Technologies also set up the AV equipment at the Highlands Department. It was moved by Crone Second to Office. A doctor has moved to approve the Iroquois County's application in the amount of $8,067.88 for the purpose of updating the AV equipment in the county boardroom. The roll call vote has been taken. The motion carried. Johnson will reach out to the applicant. As discussed, I invite them to attend the next meeting. There is no old business. There is no new business. As there was no further business to come before the committee, it was moved by Sure and said by Hobble. The adjourn at 12 35 p.m. motion carried by the day's vote. All of this is discussed in the committee. I move for its adoption. Okay, we have a motion on the floor to approve the two reports from the ARPA committee. Do we have a second? Mr. Hughes. Are there any questions or comments regarding either report? Seeing none, the clerk will call the roll. Remember, you're voting to approve both reports with this with this um, with this requirement. Hughes? Yes. McGinnis? Yes. Awful? Penny? Yes. Sure? Yes. Zumo? Yes. Alt? Yes. Bard? Yes. Barron? Yes. Bacher? Yes. Bauer? Yes. Pro? Yes. Heard it. Yeah. Okay, finance, finance, highway department. Highway <laughs> report, Mr. All. Thank you. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman and members of the county board, your committee to whom to refer transportation matters with us daily to submit the following report on the matters before them. Committee met at the Earthquake County Highway Building on April 8, 2022 at 9 a.m. Members present were all to Scott, Newmall, Crow, Young. <coughs> Young was absent, also present. All engineer Joe Moore, County Board Chairman John Schur. Meeting was called to order. There was no other comments. It was moved by John Zumo and seconded by Paul Bichat to approve the agenda motion. Carried by a way to claim the financial report for the home board. Who reviewed it was moved by Dr. Scott, <clears throat> second by some motion favorable, subject to county board approval. The roll call vote was taken and motion carried. County Highway $80,347, County Bridge $2,492, County Hatching $15,545. TVP zero, County MFP fifty six thousand eight hundred eighty nine dollars, Township MFP two hundred sixty thousand two hundred forty one dollars, County Engineer Joe Moore discusses right away <coughs> Crow County Highway City Two Bridge. It was moved by Crow and second by Jacot to purchase right away Crow County Highway forty two Bridge not to exceed. $1,000. The roll call vote was taken. The motion carried. We're referred to the committee about the recent break in at the highway department, which resulted in the loss of the highway department from one of the 18 full equipment value resulting in the loss of the highway department to the 18 full equipment value of items stolen and just short of the county. Insurance deductibility or of the 
questions or comments regarding the report? Seeing none, the clerk will call the roll, please. Yes. Awful? Yes. Penny? Yes. Sir? Yes. Dimwalt? Yes. Alt? Yes. Bard? Yes. Farron? Yes. Slasher? Yes. Bowers? Yes. Crow? Yes. Curtis? Yes. And Hughes? Okay, next you have on your agenda in front of you a list of the appointments for this month. Do we have a motion to approve those appointments? Mr. Powers, do we have a second? Mr. Curtis. Are there any questions or comments regarding the appointments? Mrs. Crow. Did we, um... Speak into your microphone, please, and we'll continue. Okay. Are there any other questions or comments? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. That motion carries. Next, we move on to claims. In addition to the claims listings that's above been sent, I have another claim this month that was just presented this morning to the host of the courts uh, for in the library. Uh, account for the amount of $4,655.87. So I will entertain a motion to approve the claims and, and including this one. Mrs. Awful, is there a second? Mr. Zumo, are there any questions or comments regarding the claims? Seeing none, for the total roll, please. Awful. <coughs> Penny? Yes. Sure. Yes. Zumwalt? Yes. Alt? Yes. Bard? Yes. Barron? Yes. Slasher? Yes. Bowers? Yes. Curtis? Yes. Hughes? Yes. And McGinnis? Yes. <clears throat> Is there any old business to come before the board this morning? Is there any new business? Seeing none, do we have a motion to adjourn? Mr. Alt? Seconded by Mr. Bowles. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same side. The meeting is adjourned.